My name is Tarmac, and this is my review of Full Throttle Remastered on PC. Full Throttle, for those not aware, was originally released in 1995 as one of the many point-and-click adventures put out by LucasArts from the Scum period. Scum being the game engine which stood for script creation utility for Maniac Mansion. You take control of Ben, the leader of a bike gang called the Polecats, who's had his bike gang stolen by a clever businessman who knocked him out and stuffed him into a garbage bin. The game releases on April 18th on PC via Steam, GOG, and the Humble Store, as well as PS4 and PlayStation Vita. Mac and Linux versions should be arriving sometime after launch as well. The gameplay is much as you might remember if you've played the original Full Throttle. Yes, it does have controller support, but they're called point-and-click games, not tilt-and-press games. The controller works, but it is a terrible way to play a game like this. Use the mouse to click on various objects around the place, but instead of having options like pick up, pull, or use, as in something like Monkey Island, instead here, you have eyes, mouth, hand, and foot. Depending on the situation, a hand might be used to pick something up or damage something or someone. You have an inventory, much like other point and clicks, though it's far less used, with only a couple of items most of the time. There's also the standard moon logic issues, where you need to try to figure out what was in the developer's head at the time, which can certainly be challenging. The bunnies are the worst, but you'll have to play the game to see that in action, as I'm not about to spoil it for you. Unlike the point-and-click games of old, Full Throttle tried to up the ante a bit on action. Midway through the game, you get access to some open road riding on your motorcycle, and you come across other bikers on the road that you can beat up to take their stuff. This minigame is similar in design to the pirate insult battles in Monkey Island from a randomist perspective, but you have to have the right weapon and get your timing right on swinging in order to actually take out the other biker. The problem is that an action style design doesn't really work well in a traditional point and click game engine, so it was always a bit janky. From a graphics perspective, the artwork has been redrawn to give the game a more modern feeling, and also to ensure that widescreen monitors are taken into account. Like previous LucasArts remasters, you can toggle between the retro look and sound with a click of a button, and it's nice to see additional off-screen artwork that they added for widescreen gaming. That said, the original aesthetic feels like it loses a little bit of its charm with the update. For the audio side of the game, they kept the original voice tracks but remastered the audio, and it sounds great. Mark Hamill voices the main villain, and he always does incredible voices. The music is also quite good, in my opinion. As far as performance and options, the original Full Throttle suffered from some very noticeable performance hitching in the bike driving section, and the remaster has exactly the same issues. I assume that this is engine related, but it indicates that the game is only a visual and audio overhaul without major underlying issues being resolved. This may bother you less than it did me, but honestly, between this and the definitely not smooth way the bike controls operate, it was frustrating to see happen. And for options, you're limited to a few volume sliders and a low, medium, high visual quality option as well. In addition, the game is a bit on the short side. While I did not finish the original game back in the day, I had played a chunk of it and I made it through the remaster in a bit under four hours. This would be longer for folks who have never played the game before though, and it's only $15 US, but I could see some raising that as a problem so I thought I'd mention it. And finally, I love that much like the other remasters Double Fine has done, they record a significant developer commentary which can be overlaid and listened to while playing the game, alongside a bunch of other concept artwork. So that stuff is great. To summarize all of this, the game looks decent and plays just as it used to, bugs and all. The audio quality is vastly improved, including dev commentary that, alongside the Retrovision toggle, makes this a self-contained piece of history, much like the other Double Fine remasters. It's short but inexpensive, and as a point-and-click adventure, hits all of the expected notes. However, because of how faithful it is to the source material, there's a good chance that modern gamers without an element of nostalgia for the game could be turned off by having to deal with gameplay elements that we used to put up with simply because they were normal for all games at the time. On that basis, I will tentatively recommend it to those gamers who already know they won't be scared off by retro point-and-click idiosyncrasies. Everyone else, can probably avoid, or maybe, wait for a sale. Thanks for checking out my review of Full Throttle Remastered on PC. This review was done using review code provided to me by Double Fine Productions. Footage recorded on an i7-5820K with 16GB of RAM and a GTX 1070 video card. Again, the game comes out on April 18th for $15 US and will be available on Steam, GOG, The Humble Store, PlayStation 4 and PS Vita with Mac and Linux versions following later. I hope the review was useful to you. My name's Tarmac. Thanks for watching.